Well, that was satisfying. Anyway, welcome to the video. As you can see from the introduction, I worked on the pathing system a bit more in this sprint. If you remember correctly from last video, I did have a pathing system that let me just paint and get the pads right out there, but it didn't really work for doing something like I showed in the introduction. I couldn't just freely paint and it automatically updates to properly demonstrate how the path should look with exactly what I've given it. It was kind of finicky, it didn't like most of the shapes I've got right here that I'm walking over, and so I'm very happy with what I have now. Basically, all that's left with the pathing system that I have in the game is to update the texture so that it looks a little bit better like this up here, and we should be good to go. So yeah, yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of stuff. Been really productive this sprint. Yeah, pause. If it wasn't already obvious from that segment, I didn't exactly get a whole lot done this sprint. You see, I've been out of town most of the time these two weeks and didn't get back to being in town again until actually yesterday, so I'd only had time to work on that pathing system and that's just about it. But this video isn't over just yet because I wanted to talk about what I plan for the rest of this year. It's hard to believe, but we're already almost halfway through this year, and I do actually have a goal that I'm trying to get to by the end of it. I started at the beginning of the year, and I want to have something actually presentable by the end. So what exactly is it that I'm trying to achieve at the end of this year? To put it probably too simply, I want a playable. And what I mean by playable is something that demonstrates the core mechanics or the basic functionality that will go into the final product of this video game. Now, I do want to clarify, if you are a game developer yourself, um, and if you're just starting out, you may have noticed that throughout this entire dev series, the past 10 episodes thus far, I haven't really talked about what's going to make this game a whole lot of fun. I've talked about how the player is going to interact with things and some general mechanics that I want in the world, but I haven't concentrated on one or two core mechanics um, that are actually going to make the game enjoyable or unique. I want to clarify, if you're making a video game yourself, and if you're just starting out in the game development industry, what I'm doing here is probably not what you should be doing. What you should do is concentrate on one or two game mechanics that you personally find interesting and you want to explore. Generally, what I'm doing here is not a good idea. I'm sort of creating a world and an experience without any clear understanding of how this experience is going to be fun. Um, ultimately, this may fail. This may be something that I come to the point of trying to create a fun experience and what I've created just doesn't work uh, with ultimately what I'm trying to do. And, um, or it may just end up being sort of fun for certain people who just like exploring. We'll see. But I wanted to clarify that, that if you're just starting out in the game industry, how I'm going about doing this without a clear understanding of the enjoyability of my game for the first entire first year is probably not what you should be doing. That being said, I am being a bit experimental on how I'm creating this game, and so I want to concentrate on the world feeling of the game and not get distracted by a simple core game mechanic that could make the experience of just the world and exploration a little bit less significant. So what is it exactly that I want to get done this year to get that playable? So in the back of my head, I have this image of, at the end of the year, being able to walk around inside this village, talk to characters, collect maybe quests, go out into the surrounding forest a little bit, view, explore, and experience and interact with the world, collecting items and using items. That's basically what I have the idea of a real actual world you can play in that I can expand with other game mechanics and other locations in the next few years. If I want to do this by the end of the year, I'm going to have to do quite a few things. Let me just run down the list for you right now. I need saving the game, player movement, inventory, items, NPC communication, AI, interiors, village art, farm art, forest art, character art, animation, generator, and some sort of quest thingy. So I have a few of those done, right? I have saving the game, I have player movement, inventory, NPC communication, and interiors. I have all of those implemented, but they don't work with each other. For example, the inventory system is just sort of smoke and mirrors. It's really just demonstrating stuff. Saving the game only saves certain things, such as the inventory, but it doesn't save the player location or the player state. 
Player movement is pretty well implemented, but there's nothing like climbing ladders or sprinting or fighting, and I'll get to fighting later. Um, and then NPC communication doesn't work with quests. You get the picture. Most of these things aren't connected, and that's because most of the things are not implemented. You may notice I have items in there, just to run down the list of things that I haven't yet implemented. Um, items, it may seem like I have them in the inventory, but like I said, the inventory currently as it stands is just smoke and mirrors. You can't use the items, you can't get more items, you can't drop any of the items. So they're just sort of sitting there in your inventory, um, not really doing anything. I'm going to have to add a lot of items to the game, so I need a robust system where items can work. In previous videos, I have talked about how I don't want items to be the central theme of the game, but items do exist in the real world, and so I'm going to have a, have a system where I can easily add a bunch of items and easily modify them on the fly throughout the development. Now, the big word you see there is AI, or the big two letters. That's mainly how the characters move throughout the scene, and maybe how they interact with the player, depending on how the player has interacted with them previously. So I want these characters to have sort of a routine that changes throughout maybe the day and the season. I don't have days and seasons um, decided to be worked on this year, but I do want to have those later on. And so players going through routine, doing their jobs, maybe getting water from the well, or creating meals, or farming, or whatever it is, I want them to be able to do this, and again, just like items, I want to easily be able to implement it throughout the game. There's going to be a lot of NPCs, which means a lot of unique AIs. Now, you also notice I've got Village art, farm art, forest art, and character art. Just a whole lot of art, which is why in the past few sprints I've been trying to implement a little bit of art into each sprint. I've got a lot of work to do, and a whole lot of that is going to be manual work, and so I want to just be able to create these as I'm working on the functionality of the game. Now that character art. There's going to be a lot of characters, and all the characters have animations, and all those animations have unique frames. I want the characters to have tons of frames, and because all of these NPCs are going to be walking around and doing things, all of those doing things requires a bunch of frames to be hand-drawn by me. I want to find out, with this animation generator idea, if they don't have to be hand-drawn by me, or if I can just auto-generate all of the animations I need by just drawing a few frames or a few images of each character or NPC that I paint. I've talked about this previously, but I'm finally getting to the point where I really want to start coding this. I'm a little hesitant because I'm scared. I don't know what this is going to entail creating this tool, um, because ultimately it's a tool. It's not a functionality when the, in the game. It's not a system within Unity. It's an external tool I'm going to have to create. And then some sort of quest thingy is my last bullet point here in my Word document, because I don't really know what that's going to be. Just like I don't want the game to be about items, I don't want the game to be about you being a bounty hunter. You're not a bounty hunter, you're an explorer. And so you're not just going around towns collecting jobs to do from player, other characters and then collecting the reward once you've done it. I do want quests, though, because I love quests, and they encourage the player, incentivize them to explore the rich world that exists. I don't know how I'm going to add this, but I'm going to play around with it hopefully this year and figure that out. Now, this is a lot of stuff, and like I said, we're almost halfway through the year. I hope that the second half of this year is more productive. That being said, the first half was very productive. Maybe we don't have a lot in the realm of content, but we've created a whole lot of systems, and we've laid the groundwork for hopefully the second half of the year, which will be a lot more repetitive, adding stuff, adding stuff, adding stuff. In the next few weeks, I'm going to start playing around with some more art, and I may even start working on this animation generator, because the more I talk about it, the more I'm excited about it, the more I want to work on it. That's all for this video. It's pretty late at night, um, so I'm going to just wrap this one up and publish this. But in the next few sprints, I'm really excited to see what different features we can add, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.